Hi everyone, today we'll go through a few examples of Boolean maths to examine and manipulate values with NumPy arrays. So again, this concept is really important because uh, if you want to extract, modify, or count, or manipulate values in a NumPy array, you're gonna to wanna to use Boolean logic and create maths uh, in order to do that with the data that you have. So you can follow along with me by downloading this Python notebook. Um, it has essentially all the exercises without any code, but I also have a second Python notebook that ha contains all the code in the, in the solutions and all that for you to use as a reference. Uh, there's also a link to the, the lecture and tutorial that, that uh, I gave uh, about this concept. So I think the best way to learn essentially is to watch that YouTube tutorial and then download this Python notebook and try to answer these questions and go through these exercises without looking at the solutions. And then download the solution set and just kind of cross-reference the solutions that I have versus the solutions that you created, right? And so um, I think that's the best way to learn. Um, and lastly, I also have uploaded the data set that we're going to be using uh, through for these exercises. Uh, and it's also linked in the description below. So let's just import NumPy real quick. And what I've already done in this Python notebook is create a, uh, a NumPy array. And so if I execute this code block, it is a NumPy array from negative three to four. All right, so what we're gonna do is just go through some simple exercises of creating Boolean math and Booleans uh, again is a data type that's just basically true or false. So we're creating NumPy arrays with just true and falses inside of that. All right, so if I have uh, this array X that has real numbers from negative three to four, can I create a Boolean maths that is basically true for all values equal or less than two? So how would I create that logic? It's pretty simple. It would just you would take the array, and then you'd create that logic. I want it, I want less than or equal to two. And so then, if I if I run this line of code, I basically get a boolean mass of um, with trues where the numbers equal or less than two. So you can cross reference by just looking at like you know the first element here. Negative three is less than two, two and so you get this true value here. So that's what we're gonna do a few more times just to reinforce this concept. Um, so if we wanted to create a Boolean mask that uh, has you know, trues for values equal to negative one, how would we do that? Simple, it's a double equal sign to compare uh, specific values and I'll just put negative one here. I should just get one false and that's what I get, the third value which is right here, the third value, negative one. Create a Boolean mass of X for all positive values. And so I basically want uh, trues for one, two, three, four, and falses for the rest, so basically the left side. And so I could just basically do a zero greater or less than X, and I create a mass just like this, all right? This one's a little bit tricky, trickier than the other few exercises, but let's create a Boolean mass of X for all even values. So we're gonna use the modulus operator here, and there's a little bit of a tip that um, if you have a modulus of two, uh, even values will have an output of zero, and odd values will have an output of one. And so let's just look at that. So we do X modulus two, we get one zero one zero one zero, so that's expected. But we want to create a boolean mass. We want trues and falses, right? So we want the one to be false, and we want the zero to be true because that denotes an even number. So if we just wanted true to be zeros, let's just do a double equal and say zero. And so now I have a boolean mass where the zeros are true and the ones are false. And that's exactly what we want. This. So here's some code to create a three by four array. 
you should get the exact same numbers that I get because we're using, uh, we're seeding the random state with zero. That's this uh, first line of code here. And so you should get these numbers. So what if we wanted to create a, an array where <clears throat> I'm, only, I'm only grabbing numbers that are greater than four? Um, and I actually want the numbers, the values, not just true and falses like we did above. Like how would I create uh, a mask? And then how would I uh, you know, basically use that mask as an index to my, to my NumPy array with values? So let's create the mass first. And so the mass is very easy. It's, it's actually X greater than four. That gives me the true and falses, the Boolean mass. So I'm just gonna actually then enca encase that in the array with actual numbers, just like this in brackets. And then I get the values that are greater than four. And it's gonna be a one dimensional NumPy array here. Right. So let's do something very similar um, for odd values this time. So remember that we use the modulus here to denote ones and zeros. We want odd values. So we're actually going to make this equal to one. And so the trues are all ones, the, the trues are all odds and the falses are all evens. So now we can easily just put this in the brackets to get an array of just odd values. And that's what we get. So now the last example before we use or import um, our data set, create an array of X containing all values that are greater than four and are not odd using Boolean operators and a masking operation. So, you know, essentially that's just basically saying, um, put two logical statements together. So the first logical statement was up here, right? It was, oops, greater than four, which is what we want here. That's greater than four and are not odd. So we want even numbers. So that was actually done here, but this is odd. But all I would have to do is just change that to, change that to zero. So I have basically two logical operators here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put parentheses so that they don't get mixed together. Um, and so I have um, values that are greater than four and values that are, if I change this to zero, are uh, not odd, are even. And so th this is the, the mask, the Boolean mask. So if I run this, I should get yeah, a bunch of falses and I see one true here. And so if I want to get that value, I just now put the the NumPy array with all the values um, and use this the logical mass as my index. And so I get one value and that's six. So it's um, it's an even number and it's greater than four, which makes sense because really it's only um, what were the options? Yeah, not all, anything greater than four were uh, odd. All right, so now we're gonna go and do do very much the same exercise, but with um, real data and the data set I have. Again, you can download it in the description. It's uh, the Seattle 2014 rainfall data. So what I'm gonna do first is import pandas because I'm gonna read in the data to this Python notebook using a pandas function called read CSV. And so in order to import this CSV file into uh, my Python notebook, I need to make sure that this data set is first on the Google server. Uh, this is very unique to Google Colabs if you're using that. If you're using Jupyter Notebooks or some other you no know, platform like Anaconda. Uh, the the steps are slightly different, but very much similar in that you just need to upload um, and identify where you have the CSV file saved. So I'm actually going to upload this to the Google server right here. So now I am going to read in the CSV file. <clears throat> 
So if I want to just look at the CSV file just to make sure I've uh, uploaded it correctly, I'm going to use the head function to give me the first five rows. And here are the, uh, this is the data set here. The, the data I care about is really just precipitation, PRCP, this column right here, which gives me the, the rainfall information and, and by date here. And so the units here, I'm basically, I think it's in millimeters, so I'm gonna convert it into inches. And uh, the conversion is already coded out here. So if you do end up downloading this Python notebook, the code is already written out here. So I am grabbing just this one column here, um, rainfall PRCP, and saving that data to a variable called inches. And then calling the shape um, attribute just to see like how many values I, were, I was able to, to import through this data set. This data set has 365 values. And that makes sense because it's one uh, rainfall data point for every day of the year. Really quickly, I just want to plot just to see um, what this hist what what the data looks like. So I want to plot a histogram. So I've imported the matplotlib library and then the Seaborn library just to make things you know visually more appealing. And so in order to plot a histogram, what I'm going to do is call the histogram function here. plt dot hist inches forty. 40 buckets. So <clears throat> now I'm, I look at, I, I'm able to visualize the, the data points and it's, it seems like all, there wasn't a lot of rainfall in 2014. There are a lot of zeros here. So the X axis is the amount of rainfall. The Y axis is the day uh, or, or sum of days. All right, so this is just for reference. Um, so now we're gonna do the exercises that reflect the Boolean mass concepts. So the first thing is to create a Boolean mass uh, of rainy days with rainfall. So key phrase here is rainfall, with rainfall. So what I wanna do is eliminate all days without rainfall, so all days with zero. So the, the, the data I want is inches. If I look at it, what I wanna do is just kind of remove all of these values here, all of these days. And that's a very easy Boolean mass to create. It's just inches greater than zero. If I run that, I get a bunch of true and falses. So I'm gonna actually save this Boolean mass in a, in a variable called rainy. And so I'm gonna save that for later. I'm gonna save that for um, actually this question, this exercise here. So what I'm gonna do first is answer these, this question. So for all days, print the median, mean, and standard deviation of rainfall for all days, right? So I'm gonna actually just use this inches uh, variable here that contains all, all the rainfall for all of the days in that year. So it's pretty easy to create the, to find the median. It's uh, for median, I'm gonna use the NumPy median function and I'm gonna just type in inches because I care about all the days and all the rainfall data right and so I get zero so what I'm gonna do also is I'm gonna do these print uh, print statements to make it slightly easier to look at uh, mean would be the mean inches and standard deviation would be just printing out uh, the std function standard deviation of the inches array so we get i should get three numbers so the median amount of rainfall in seattle is zero but the average is slightly higher it's 0.13 and then the standard deviation of rainfall by day um, is uh, 0.66 all right so if I care about only rainy days, I would want to use this Boolean mass, right? I would want to use this, basically this variable. So all I would have to do is just, uh, I'm going to copy this 
and I would just need to filter out the the uh, the data points. So essentially filter out the non rainy days. So now I want to leverage my Boolean mass rainy because that's going to give us just the rainy days. Right, so I'm using essentially a Boolean mass here that that gives me true uh, a Boolean of true for all rainy days, and then I am using this uh, the data inches, which is a rainfall for all days, and so it's gonna basically this this whole expression here is gonna give me the amount of rainfall uh, for just the days it rained, and it's gonna remove all the days where it did not rain. So that should, that should give me three values here, which is the median is now 0.19, the, the mean, the average is 0.32, and the standard deviation is 0.33. And these numbers here make sense. Uh, it should be higher than these, number, uh, these numbers here because I'm only calculating rainy days, right? And, and this uh, calculation here includes all days. And if you remember what that histogram looked like, the majority of days in Seattle uh, did not have any rainfall. So it makes sense that the median actually was zero. Um, and all of these numbers here were a lot smaller than um, these numbers down here where I only calculated or considered days where it rained. All right, so that's it for Boolean arrays.